Hello everyone, I'm Dre, Collect the Dragon, not the rapper, and today I applied to six online courses and then thought, you know what, I'm not gonna start any of those, and instead I'm gonna play Scarlet Hollow episode one, because why not? Why not? So, I think this is gonna be serious, so I uh, don't feel like, you know, doing my usual stupid names. Um, yeah, let's go with Drake. Oh god, where do I live? Um, I don't know. I just made that up. Haha! <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with she, her. That's, that's really nice that uh, you can choose your pronouns. Okay, so we get to select two traits, which unlock additional paths and dialogue options. Powerful build, strong athletic, pinnacle of fitness, <laughs> pinnacle of fitness. Uh, I'll just, I don't know why I said it like I said pineapple. Um, can shotgun a root beer in three seconds. Mystical, strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in a way others cannot. You can talk to animals. Animals can talk to you. A gift and a curse. Smells bullshit. Also good at bullshit, no door can hold you. Observant, picks up on vibes, understands others' perspectives. You know a lot of fun facts, researches your favorite activity, straight A student. I don't see how that one's gonna be helpful. Um, attractive, charming, people want to be either with you or, or uh, be you. I don't see how that one's gonna be useful either. Um, I feel like I'm gonna go with mystical and street smart, because that seems like it's gonna be really useful. If it's like a mystery game and we want to find something out. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you would only just managed to start drifting off. And now here you are. You wake again, still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long-lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late-night stops in seedy de depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the, for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. He gives me very uh, Todd from Bojack Horseman vibes. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the arbor, that sort of thing. Uh, remain silent. <laughs> you do your best to keep a blank face, waking up and by extension accidentally giving this strange man permission to keep talking to you was a mistake. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was gonna call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and it started to hurt a lot, so I guess she really was mad about and not just playing. So she kept swinging, and soon enough, she lost her balance and fe fell into the arbor all of her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out. And her phone got soaked she so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that. Okay, this is definitely Todd. We've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me. Like, for real. And jeez, you ever just get so mad you want to, like, kill somebody? Oh, street smart. Stop trying to get a rise out of me. Threaten. I kind of feel like killing someone right now. Never feel that way, no. All the time. What's wrong with you? Smile and just pretend he didn't say that. Stop trying to get a rise out of me. Stop it. Huh? Stop what? Whatever it is you think you're doing right now, you know what I'm talking about. This whole corner 
a stranger on the bus and tried to make them uncomfortable act. I'm not playing along. Ha, <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe I never wanted to kill her, even if I threatened it a little bit. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm like into that stuff. So I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Well, that's very untaught like now. That's interesting. Smart move. Get out while you can. Remain silent. Seriously, what the hell is wrong with you? Your girlfriend is giving birth right now and you're thinking about ditching her to go have fun in New York after she tried to break up with you and you threatened to kill her? Hey now, I never threatened to kill her. You just told me you did. Okay, maybe over a text, just a little, but fatherhood is scary, plus her mom is there, so it's not like she's alone. Her mom doesn't like me much, so it probably just makes things super stressful. She'll understand, she's chill. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I didn't... I need to be nasty, I was just asking, not like I'm gonna follow you off the bus or anything. <laughs> So if you aren't going off at my stop, then you must be headed to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the Holler, as they call it in these parts. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, I'd know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way, though, come to think of it. Had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the Holler, you see. And there's always job listing or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. Haven't heard from them in a while. Now that I think about it, I should see if they're on Facebook. See how they're doing up there. Oh, they didn't die. He looks back at his phone, for once. Focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you can use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Um. Uh. I'm gonna take them. You take the peanuts. Thanks. You're welcome. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. I take the peanuts and place them in the nearest trash can. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow, under the line. Almost there. Bus finally comes to a stop. It's a brake squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. Well, the sign reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, caking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you in this place behind. Hey, Drake. You instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos of her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be there. Oh no. I'm gonna give her my condolences. I'm so sorry for your loss, Tabitha. Yes, great, thank you. Let's get back to the estate. I don't want to spend any more time down, time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. I love the mouse. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. I'm gonna use a tip, dialogue options, label explore, can usually be taken without advancing the story. Okay, they can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. Nice. Um, oof, I guess we're both members of the Dev Mom Club now, huh? <laughs> Deal. For the funeral, have we ever actually met? Explore, I guess. Have we ever actually met before? I'm pretty sure this is the first time, right? 
Yep, you have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. <laughs> Is there bad? I wish I had known about you. I don't know why my mom left or what kind of grudge she had against this side of the family, but I'm sorry. I wish I'd known about you. Whatever. What's done is done. Tabitha stares straight ahead. Her expression is tense and icy. How are you holding up? Fine. Um. Okay, but if that ever changes, I'm here for you, okay? Even after I go home. Sure. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. Um, so the funeral. <laughs> it's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. I'm gonna remain silent on this. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Almost a whole week. Need any help planning? Okay. Um, I guess need any help planning, though she probably won't. If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. Just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. Okay. Um, do I want to say this? <laughs> Members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Ooh, I'm gonna remain silent. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up on the steep mountain road. Oh, that's badass. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's been though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to be cramped apartments. Oh, someone used to cramped apartments in Grey Cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. God, that's a good sentence. As you stare at it, perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. As soon as you enter, you're hit with a blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges, and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen, and uh, hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll share around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. <laughs> well, you really let this place go, so I know. <laughs> Jeez. Why would I lie? I don't want to lie. <laughs> um. So you live here? Yeah, and I'm letting you stay here for free, so mind your manners. Or did your mother not teach you about those? Shall we take the tour? Follow me. I didn't mean to be mean. I'm sorry, Tabitha. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. kitchen. On Wednesday, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name's Janie. I would recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac or and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Oh, okay. Mm. 
I feel a wild energy in this room, as if the natural world is creeping in to finally reclaim its territory. Okay, geez, I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Janie to be more thorough this week. But you should know there's only so much anyone can do with a country house this old. It's always gonna be a little grimy and worn, unlike your sleek city apartments. If a little dirt bothers you, you're gonna have a rough time this week. I might want to eat something other than peanut butter and jelly this week. Is there somewhere in town we can eat get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in, bul food in bulk online, though, so I wouldn't be going with you. Sweet, thanks. Cool, good talk. Alright, what's next? On the tour. Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Hey, pretty cat! Is that your cat? What's its name? Fru-fru, do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Leave the cat be, bitch. Respect cats. You decide to follow Tabitha's advice. Shall we move on? The bathroom awaits. You once again follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being, you feel lucky to not have fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must if you must. It is a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in corners of the room, and mystery stains paint the floor. Uh, who else use who exactly use it? Uh, lift toilet seat. Bug skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. Yikes! Hey, I'm gonna use the facility as a, to as a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Honestly, guys, this has very my high school bathroom vibes, so if I really had to use the bathroom, and if they had soap, I'd be happy. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you a permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you'd better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use a dresser. It should be empty. Who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me. I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Mm. Okay. Um. Uh, wait, where are you going? To work. Someone has to pay the bills around here. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every scarlet who came before me. 
except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate if you didn't keep me for long. Okay. Um... Hashtag a girl boss. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, dude. Oh. Oh, no. I didn't mean to actually say that. Oh, fuck. I'm having secondhand embarrassment for my in game character. Oh. God. Gaslight gatekeep. Coal mine. Damn, I can't believe you're only in your 20s and already writing a coal mine. Talk about hashtag girl boss. Oh my god. Yikes. Don't patronize me. I know you have nothing to your name, Drake. Any other inane questions before I leave? I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you're back. We'll see. There's a lot of things I need to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and the sprawling, decrepit estate. Um, I'm gonna go settle into my room. Now that your cousin is gone, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. You stumble back up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. Put your spare clothes in the dresser. A possum! <laughs> you drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer, and a possum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Um, gently smack a possum. Um, offer it your boiled peanuts. You hold out your still dripping bag of boiled peanuts. The opossum hisses in disgust, stiffens and begins to drool, feigning death. You close the drawer. You might as well leave it be. You open the top drawer next. It's empty, as good as places you'll find to put your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you would have been better off keeping your clothes in your nice clean bag, but there's no going back now. Ah, you'll wash him. Um, I would like to examine the painting. This must be an old relative of yours. Very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her. But you'd barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago. So that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet next time you see her. That is, if she actually is in the mood for conversation. I want to check the closet. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of the closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up here. Pick up the doll. Of course you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. Its foot read, property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must be in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. You'd go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve topiaries, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you'd definitely do that. Just not right now. Let's take a nap. You immediately collapse onto the bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as sm a small cloud of dust rises from the mattress. These sheets might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. You try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places, and you can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from it tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. Um, okay, that's enough. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do right here right now. Mm, TB injury sounds good. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. A PB&J sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. 
You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task, given the state of this place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread plates, and a knife. Um... Ooh, I want to check out the garden. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. You don't think you want to go out there after all. Are we even up to date on your tetanus shots? Return to the kitchen. You close the door behind you and return to the kitchen. Um, search the cabinets. The cabinets must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and, oddly enough, the utensils. Um... I would like to examine the mug. It reads, I was blown away at Blowing Rock and Sea. So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometimes, even if it was only a few hours away from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. I'll examine the shot glass. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perlan, so this wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you'd heard from your mom, Perlan wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Um, grab a plate and a butter knife. All you need now is some actual food. You close the cabinet and look back to the rest of the kitchen. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped at a door reading, Janie stay out in all caps. Below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, Okie dokie! You open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Mood. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly. Carefully checking its expiration date, you breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need now is some bread and peanut butter. Better close this fridge and keep looking. Yeah, fuck it. Mm, search the pantry. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. Big bread. Pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great, one step closer to a satisfying snack. Take peanut butter. The king of nut butters. Only 3% of your jar is mashed up cockroaches. Gif. This is the last ingredient you need to make your PB&J. Time to get to work. Close the pantry. You close the pantry door as best you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. Make that PB&J. Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you could feed yourself. Yay! Achievement unlock, cooking by the book, a job well done. All of that hassle, and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. I'm done here. I'm not gonna approach the cat. Uh, what do we want to do next? Um, I don't think there's anything else in the kitchen I can explore, and I'm not gonna bother a cat that doesn't like to be bothered, so I'm gonna head into town. There's not much left for you to do here other than head out and explore the town. You do just that. I think exploring the estate sounds really cool and all, but... Um, I don't want to end the game too soon by, like, falling through the floor and getting myself hurt or something. If you'd have known you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between you two. Clean and bury some of the tension. Though, maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time continue down the path.
It's really pretty out here. Finally, you made it back to town. The hauler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane, and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Gretchen, come back! Quit bothering strangers! Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to be. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. Oh. Um. A pug. She's so cute. I love pugs. She's so cute. Thanks. She is cute. Sure, most of her teeth have fallen out and she's got a couple of weird growths. But for a 17-year-old pug, that's pretty good. 17? It's gotta be really old for a dog, right? It sure is. She's about 84 in dog years. I'm hoping she beats the current record holder and makes it to 19. Or better yet, 20. The more time we get together, the better, isn't that right, Gretch? Oh man, Gretchen looks ready to die. <laughs> but where are my manners? Talking to you for this long without introducing myself. I'm Stella. Not often I see a strange face up in Holler. Every now and then there's a new crop of coal folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? <laughs> um... I'll introduce myself. Yeah, hi, I'm Drake. <laughs> you must be Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. How's she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her, all alone in that big house. A darkness hangs over her. Um... Is she always so, you know, rough around the edges? Yep, that's tabby for you. I wouldn't take it too personally. I'm not sure what it says about her state of mind that she's still here. That she's still her same grumpy old self. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even though she'd probably never admit it. Are you two friends? I was probably closer than most people have gotten to be able to call her a friend. The school here is really small, so everyone had to at least get along with everyone else. She was a grade ahead of me, but everyone knew her, especially since she's Scarlet. We wound up bonding a bit when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was... Mustard... Mustard Seed? Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was that. Oh, if uh, you just got into town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for coffee. They've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Okay, let's follow her. Holy shit, people? The pleasant aroma of greasy breast breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting din of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just slide in <laughs> to the nearest booth, pretending I didn't notice everyone in the diner gawking at me like they'd just seen Bigfoot. That sounded like a toot. Uh, no need to be shy. They don't meet many strangers. It's kind of a big deal when someone new wanders into town. Especially since, well, they probably all know what you're here for, and by extension, who you're related to. Even if you don't know anybody, it's not easy keeping secrets in a town this size. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Ah, oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. Anything for you? Um... 
Can I order a biscuit and a coffee? Could I have a biscuit and a coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Best in the county. Avery pulls the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. Anyways, the funeral's not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral too, so it'll be a special occasion. Um, is the potluck a, is the potluck a church thing? Wouldn't it be weird for me to come in if I'm not a if I'm not a member? No, no, the Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Um, not too many people go to church around here, if I'm being honest. <laughs> a non-religious community rural south? That's gotta be unusual. I know, I know. We must seem like such, we must seem like such heathens. But there are plenty of God-fearing folks in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building's fine, but the pastor's another story. There's just something a little off about the guy. You'll get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? Um... Honestly, I have no clue. While you're in luck, as you happen to run into the person who knows all the best stuff to do around here and has a limitless time to show you around. My boss is pretty forgiving. Oh wait, you probably wouldn't get that joke since we don't know each other that well. Um, I'm self-employed, so I'm my own boss. I'm forgiving myself. Get it? Yeah, I get it. Poor Stella can finish. Avery returns. Biscuits in tow. Here's your biscuit. Winnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. Thanks, Avery. It looks great. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth animates from its surface. You don't even need to taste it to know that it is good. Divinity given buttery form. You take a bite, it melts in your mouth. As if it was nothing but butter suspended in, thir in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. This is the <laughs> best biscuit I've ever had, but that's not saying much. You're not too big on biscuits in general. I don't think I actually like biscuits. Like, I know this is a really good biscuit and I'd eat it again, but if this is the best the world of biscuits has to offer, consider me an impressed. What? I didn't know I was gonna say that. I wanted to be like, holy shit, this is a really, really good biscuit. I wanted to just like really. Oh, oh, sorry to hear that. I didn't mean to. To each their own, I guess. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not gonna go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Ooh. What kind of videos do you do? She hunts cryptids. Oh, Stella, you wanna hang out? You should really check out her channel, Drake. It's amazing. How did he know my name? You choose to ignore Avery mentioning your name before you've been introduced. It's a small town where it probably gets around. I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Catawaba River Runner. 
I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being the most popular video by far. The, the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Katawaba ri River, and uh, that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Bella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. Some folks said it was a beaver, but if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've ever seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was, and I'm the one that saw the thing with my own two eyes. That's an honest-to-god cryptid there. Uh, totally a dog. Um, that's an honest-to-goodness cryptid right there. No way that's a beaver or a dog. And there's no way a capybara would be swimming in a river in the mountains of North Carolina. Unless there's some North American colony of capybaras in Appalachia, but that would still count as a cryptid, wouldn't it? Yeah, until someone catches a capybara up here, that would still count as a cryptid by most standards. My comment section went nuts for this footage, and uh, from there it spread to Twitter pretty fast. There were polls for days. I even had actual experts weighing in. It was all a really cool experience. And it meant the video did some pretty good numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like uh, any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. Exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free, and now it will forever roam the Ketawaba, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So. Speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you want to come along. It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the, uh... Wait, no spoilers. Oops, sorry, Avery. It's okay. I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you all around. Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. You stinky. <laughs> um, what skunk ape? It's like Bigfoot, but smellier. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, but while I was doing research for it last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck, playing tug of war with her dog. And as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. So what do you say, wanna tag along? Hold the camera for me while I narrate against the darkening sky, that sort of thing? Hmm, that does depend, will Gretchen be there? Of course, it's actually been a while since I had anyone but Gretchen out there with me. Say no more, I'm in. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in school, so it'll kind of be like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun, and that's all that mattered to us. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come out his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reese, dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or? Okay, if you're really sure, but if you change your mind. Uh, I was just calling if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. She's Tabitha's cousin. I know, yeah. Just here for the week. Anyway, we're going out to look for Skunk Ape. We could take the easier trails, if that could help. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have more low-key hang. How's that? Yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he asked about Gretchen. Um, 
Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He's had a lot going on in the past, uh, gosh, 10 years or so, but I feel like it's gotten a lot worse le recently. Can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about, really. I just got a little excited thinking about him, about having him along and again. He's hilarious, you'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. That'd be nice. I'd love to meet your friends. Awesome, I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she's at the general store basically every day. But friendship can wait. Wait. <laughs> We've got a skunk ape to hunt. Hunt. Damn. What is up with me? So, we should probably head out if we want to make it up to the, no to the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. Um, yeah, I want to leave a tip. You reach into your pockets and pull out a single crumpled dollar, barely in a quarter. As long as you don't get sick of peanut butter and jelly, your meals will be free while you're here. Share the wealth while you've got it, you think to yourself. You leave the money on the table and follow Stella out of the diner. Now, this is cool. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization and the people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel... Strangely calm. The setting sun paints beautiful colors in the sky. Fresh air fills your lungs. And pleasant songs of crickets trill around you as the night descends. This is where you're supposed to be. With Stella by your side and a sweet smile on her face. And Gretchen plodding along in front without a care in the world. Gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record. Since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet, until next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change, like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. Do you ever hunt things that aren't cryptids? You know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck, though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping I'd stumble across any sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard. When all said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there, but if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Honestly, I love her Mothman shirt too. Werewolves? I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there were actually people out there who turned into animals, but werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptid. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist. Because if there really are out there, geez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all that is just bunk, am I right? <laughs> what do you think about aliens? <laughs> don't even get me started. Did you see those UFO videos that the government be classified? Aliens are definitely real, and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. You don't see me hunting aliens out here because we know they're real. Hmm. I'm gonna rain silence, you shrug in silence. Fair enough. 
Mm. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you've seen in the woods, other than anything cryptid related, of course? Oh gosh, that's a good one. Let me think. Uh, well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure it counts as weird anymore. Oh, Tetanus Lake? That's definitely the weirdest. It was 5 foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage, with grass and trees growing on it, so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped in it. It was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through if you weren't careful, hence the name. Better be up on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It was all stuff from the 50s, too, which was super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I keep on my dresser as a little souvenir. Has anything bad ever happened on these hikes? You know, just curious. Hmm, let me think. There was that time, back in early high school, when Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks from town rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine, and his leg only took a couple of months to heal. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there were also that time when I was out there and kinda got a... I was out here alone and kinda got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats, but I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out that the wampus cats were actually skunks who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside, bored to tears. Lassie she is not. It took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense, but a few tomato juice baths later enough was red as rain so it could have been a lot worse. Oh, and there was the time I accidentally stumbled onto Old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off, but that happens to everybody sooner or later, so I barely count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Let's move on. Did you hear that? Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Phew, sorry for being jumpy, Duke. I thought you were... Some creature of darkness. Nah, girly, just old Duke. Now what the hell are you looking for? Way out here. Skunk ape. Sorry, I asked. And who's this you suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick, you want... Is that... Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. I'll oh, keep you in my prayers. Another stranger, another opportunity for a salty introduction. I don't want to offer anybody my boiled peanuts. I'm gonna keep my peanuts to myself. Briefly consider offering them to Duke before realizing they would probably be more of an insult than anything else you keep them hidden away. Now both of y'all head back into town, you hear? It's best to steer well clear of this area tonight. I'm out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative if a couple fools with a camera scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your old business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Aw, oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about... Junkabungas or what have you. Something's been getting out my chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose more, any more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that. But, uh, I wonder if Skunk Ape has a taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is. I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, Duke, you don't think it's... 
I do, actually. It's one of those damn mountain lions. They're still out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. These sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find anyone in night's tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting out my chickens. Couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s. And even those were iffy. Well, I can't believe you go out there on your YouTube saying some river monsters spotted by a couple school-age boy scouts has been 100% confirmed the Appalachian cougars are the same kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. You eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of these woods at dawn. And if you two don't want a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. I don't think this well ends well to you, oh god. Um. Right on, Duke. Okay, let's go. I just go with Stella. He's the one with the gun after all. You're right. No point in losing any more time arguing. Fine, we'll head back to town. Break a leg out there, Duke. Break a what now? I mean, good luck, old man. Alright, have a nice night, y'all. As you and Stella return to the trail, she carefully looks back at the way you came. Okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out of that easy. Come on, I know a trail that'll lead us- Oh, that'll let us get around him. Oof. Um... Um... Oh man, I don't know. I might follow her silently. The trail's just up this way, let's go. There are definitely- more ways this can go, I think, so. Alright, this looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. <clears throat> As the night falls, my new assistant, the mysterious Drake, it's mythical, actually, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin our hunt after the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted along the southern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Here's hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We'll check back once we're on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars. That's a good name. I can take the camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start the tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. In the meantime, we get to take all this beautiful scenery in. It's gorgeous out here, don't you think? There's something wrong here? That's interesting that I would- I want to keep this, these for myself because I don't think they're going to progress the conversation very well, but it is interesting because it does give you insight into like thinking that um, Duke's probably not going to be well off after tonight and thinking that there's something wrong happening. Um, it's breathtaking, and the air is so clean and fresh, I feel like I'm breathing for the first time. It is. I'm glad you came out here. Gretchen has no appreciation for this beautiful mountain vistas, and it gets old saying wow into the empty expanse every time I come out here. It's nice to have someone to say wow with. Oh. Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. Um... Death has come for me at last. Goodbye, cruel world. What was that? 
No need to panic. It's just the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of their herd about the big scary predators like us. Let's check it out. That did not sound like a deer, dude. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. A single deer remains behind, staring down at the beam of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. And then it's gone. Is that deer okay? Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself. She cannot handle deer. And she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato, and they don't make a harness to fit potatoes, do they? Yeah, there was something wrong with that deer. Did you see its face? Now that you mention it, there was something a little off. I bet it was an abscess, maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, so they just get bigger and bigger. Poor thing. There's not much we can do about it. Um... I'm gonna remain silent. Hey, are you hungry? Now seems like a great time to take a snack break. As you settle down to rest, Stella opens a bag of assorted snacks. Ooh. Ooh, those are actually pretty good snacks. Uh, I think I'm going to take a snack bar. Grab a snack bar. Excellent choice. A good source of energy and chocolate. They're cherry and cashew. I hope that's okay. I like to make my own, and I tend to make them with my favorites, but I know that's not everyone's bag. Um... It's a good combo. Who could turn up their nose at a dried cherry? And cashews are always an excellent choice for a nut bar. Sturdy, yet soft. Thank you, thank you. I love all nuts equally, but finding the right ones for my bars has been a long process. They have to be architecturally sound enough to hold the bar together without overpowering the texture of the fruit. Almonds and cashews are my go-tos, though occasionally I'll experiment with pecans. They fall apart so easily, though. I've never had pecans. We don't really get pecans here, and the one time I saw them in store, they were so expensive, there was no way I could get them, but I've heard of good things. Heard they're nice, and I do like nuts, uh, except for walnuts. I like all the other ones. Anyway, sorry to ramble. It's hard for me to stop once you get me started on snack recipes. You and Stella settle down on an overlook, snacks in hand. As the quiet sounds of an evening wildlife wash over you, Gretchen knocks on a stick, distracted for the time being. So, tell me what it's like in Blackthorn. Do you have a house? An apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Drake. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. I like this one. I live alone in a dingy studio apartment. And it's a mixed bag. At first it was kinda nice to finally have space that was just mine, but now it feels cramped. Feels like I'm stuck in a closet alone and no one can hum come home to, you know, let me out because I chose this for myself and as far as they know, I'm happy being here. The lights flicker, the toilet is consistently getting backed up because the landlady upstairs keeps flushing her cat's litter, smells like cigarettes for some reason, and it's home to an extremely durable population of roaches. But I guess it's home. Um, I do what I can to spruce up the place. I get a plant. You know how they say living things were supposed to brighten up a room? When you put it like that, I wonder if staying in that old mansion is a step up or a step down for you. Maybe just a step sideways. Have you tried looking for a different place or maybe finding a roommate? There's gotta be a better apartment than that in a big city like Blackthorn. Hmm. Oh, I hear you. I've been saving up for something better. Oh, yeah? So, what do you do for a living? Um.
Well, I guess I'm a streamer. <laughs> I'm actually a streamer. Oh, no way! A fellow content creator. That's awesome. I knew we had a lot in common, Drake. What sort of streams do you do? I mostly stream video games. That's cool. I'll have to check out your channel sometime this week. How do you like it? Um, well, these are both pretty strong. Um, I don't know. Let Stella's compliment hang gently over the sounds of nature. A crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house, so he must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Um... Did you live alone there? Yeah. The place used to belong to my parents, but they're not around anymore, and... The holler's small enough place that the other folks don't need roommates. Oh, I didn't even see what the options were, but I guess I said, oh jeez, I'm so sorry. It's okay, you didn't know. And I've done my morning. You don't have to watch your tongue around me or anything. Life goes on. So I guess her parents died, or her family died? I didn't get to see that. Um, yeah. What were they like? Did you get along? They were amazing, two of the nicest people you'd ever meet, and interesting too. My dad was a bit of a regional legend among hunters and trappers. He was always out in the woods, on the trail of something. And we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap and got damn good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. I could make us a pretty good salad with just what's in this clearing, if I had to, but it wouldn't exactly taste great. After my mom, she was a saint. She was the local vet, the lady all the farms in the county knew to call if their animals were in need of something. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out pulling calves out of 16... Hundred pound cows all day is a great way to build muscle. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse would get proper care in her hands. I'm sure she's most of the reason Gretchen's here. Gretchen here is one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So yeah, those were my parents. Mm. I'm sorry for your loss, I... Don't know what to say, I'm just so sorry. That's okay. I know it's weird, especially since we met today. Whoa. Stella immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Stella immediately- okay, um... Oh man, it's concave. It's gotta be, right? <laughs> Could be, could be. Whatever made that sound, I've never heard anything like it, and it was close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me, and let's check this out. You and Stella inch towards the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the woods. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Maybe duck's burrs weren't eaten at all. What? What the... What the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it... Must be maybe... Two? Three feet tall? Doesn't look hairy either. I think we can rule out Skunk Ape. But whatever it is, it has one of Zook's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. Um... Right behind you. You follow Stella as she sprints into the unknown, Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. Oof. Um. Are you okay? 
Ah, <laughs> yeah, I'm alright. I just tripped on something weird. Oh no, that poor thing. It must be one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. Investigate the chicken. You move towards Stella to get a closer look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen too close. She'll try to make a bite if you don't stop her. You hold Gretchen's leash short oh close to your chest. She seems nervous, squirming slightly against her harness. Its poor little chicken eyes look up at you, glazed over but still rolling around in their sockets with unfortunate life. Looks like this is what Stella slipped on. The wing is barely still attached, but that seems to be the least of the chicken's concerns. Good god. At first you thought it might have been a tumor, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut, the growth pulsing beneath. Yeah. You back away from the chicken, your curiosity eclipsed by your instinct for self-preservation. Having investigated to your heart's content, you turn away to give Stella room to film. Ahem. It seems you found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and she's not looking good. I'm hesitant to speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Jeez, I'm gonna have to put up some massive content warning for this video. Hey, do you hear that? What in the Sam hell are you two doing out there? And I tell you to... B Birdie? Oh, Birdie, what's wrong, darling? Good God. Did y'all see what did this to her? Um... Holy shit. We didn't see whatever did this to your bird. But I think we can hear them right now. Ah, oh, don't tell me you're all caught up in Stella's nonsense. Duke, I'm sorry. We were on the trail when we found her like this. Put that camera away, for God's sake, girl. I don't want to be in another of your, vi of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. Duke, did you hear what Drake said? I think they're coming closer. Come on out, you sons of bitches. Duke, don't shoot them. We have no idea what will happen. You hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they'll, pl they'll pay for my what they did to my girls. Come on, you, whatever your name is. Grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Oh my god! You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. Your eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. <gasps> god damn it! Oh my god! You hear a body hit the ground, and then quiet as chaos fades and the sounds of nature creep back in. Gretchen? Drake? Duke? Are you alright? Gretchen's frightened whine speaks for the both of you. Gretchen, here I'll take her, my poor little pup. Thanks for watching out for her. D Duke, are you okay? Oh, Duke's not okay, bro. Oh, Duke is not okay, dude. Oh, fuck, Duke is not okay. Oh my god. Oh my god, Duke. Holy shit, what do we do now? What the hell are we supposed to do? What do you mean, what do we do? We, we gotta take this to the police, a man's dead. You're right, you're right. And we have footage of what happened here. But it's so dark and shaky, it all seems so unbelievable. We need more footage. Um, come on, let's go after them before we lose our chance. Are you nuts? A man's dead. I, uh, yeah, you're right. Let's head back and call the police. My phone should get reception once we're back on the main road. I'm not gonna go chase. Whoa! As you and Stella quickly make your way back to the woods, the unearthly whispers of creatures unknown once again surround you. 
Oh god, uh, uh. Oh god, they're back. I know, we just have to keep pushing forward. Bro, the fuck? We're almost there. As you and Stella reach the main road, the whispers fade back into the sounds of nature. It sounds like they've stopped following us. I should get reception now. I have a whack on the main road. Let me find my phone so I can call the sheriff. You feel a buzz in your pocket. Six missed calls from Tabitha and 13 text messages. Um, you should call, you try and call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. You text Tabitha back and let her know that you're okay. Your message site's unread. Um, you slide your phone back into your pocket. You can deal with Tabitha later. Alright, let's uh, call the police. Stella pulls out her phone and dials. Hello, Earl. It's Stella Richmond. I'm up on the mountain on the Asgana Trail. Duke is dead, Earl. Shotgun happened right in front of us. There's there's something in the woods. You've got to hurry. Okay, okay, yeah. Are they really gone? Yeah, I think we're okay, but hurry, Jesus Earl. Who's gonna tell Bo? I guess now we wait. It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car, car arrives at the scene. Out of it walk two officers, Sheriff Hugby, a friendly older man, and Deputy Franklin, a serious man, wearing sunglasses despite it being the middle of the night. See? Right here, a thing jumps out of the woods, then the shotgun goes off. What in the Sam Hill? What is this, some kind of Pillsbury doughboy? Could have been a naked maniac. No, no, there was more than one. They chased us out through the woods. Whatever they are, they aren't human. And they killed Duke. Uh-huh. Uh, now we're gonna have to confiscate this camera, Miss Richmond, if you don't mind. This is evidence, but I... Okay. Let me just turn it off to save the battery. Stella gave in to their request suspiciously easily. Here you go, Deputy Franklin. We appreciate your compliance with the law. We'll get a team out in the morning to retrieve the body, but for now, Sheriff Hugby and I... Please call me Earl. Uh, Earl and I will escort you and... Who are you exactly? That's Drake. She came into town today for the funeral. Drake, as in... Tabitha's cousin, yeah. Damn, didn't think it'd actually show. We'll escort you both back to town. If there's a naked maniac on the loose, it's best you don't walk back on your own. It wasn't a... Never mind. Why aren't you going out there tonight? There's a dead body in the woods. Those things could attack someone else. Well, it ain't exactly like old Duke's going anywhere at this point. He'll still be out there in the morning. We only have a skeleton crew at the moment. Monday nights are Deputy Derrickson's bowling nights. We'll be on alert for any more reports of naked maniacs, but retrieving Duke will just have to wait. Now, if you'll kindly step into the vehicle, we could return you safely to your home. Do we have to ride back with you? We can just walk. This creature's left. We'll be fine. I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist for your own safety. Stella sighs. Okay, thank you. You can ride up front with me, little lady. That's if your mama permits. Eh, sure, Earl. You can hold Gretchen on the way back to town. You two stay out of trouble. We'll have this all sorted out in the morning. Just get a good night's sleep. And you, whatever your name was. Drake. Sure, you're in town for the funeral? Good. Don't you go leaving before then. I imagine we'll need to ask a few questions about everything you've seen tonight. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get into more trouble. Y'all have a good night now. Bye-bye, Gretchy. And you have a lovely evening. If any bugaboos give you trouble, you know how to get in touch. Holy shit. And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, but no one but Stella in, with no one but Stella in sight. Holy shit. 
Um. Um. How are you holding up? How am I holding up? I mean, I'm not great, but I'm more worried about you. I can't believe they just implied that you're a suspect even after we showed them all that footage. But it's okay. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. I was there. I filmed the whole thing. At the very least, it'll never hold up in court. And it won't get to that point either because we're going to do a little investigating on our own. We've got to find out more about those things. If we can get a clearer footage, or better yet, trap one of them, there's no way they can blame you for what happened. The library doesn't open for a while, but I've read every book on cryptids they have and never came across anything like this. There is someone in town who might have some useful information. Her place isn't far. We should head there now before it gets any later. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do. I should probably check in on Tabitha. My friend's place on the way back and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I wouldn't want to head back up that mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. Um, when you put it like that, sure, let's do it. Awesome. Let's go. Honestly, guys, this, is, this episode is a lot longer than I expected, but damn, am I into it. <laughs> I hope she's still awake. Drake? Jesus. You and Stella turned to see a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. Welcome home. Whoever this is, its present has chilled you to your soul. Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open and an older woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. If you look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? just happened who what the chills oh i hated that how is she so calm how, how are people so calm the fuck hi yes mrs forsen this is drake is it okay if we come in you and Miss Forsyth briefly lock eyes. So blinding and overpowering is her aura that just looking at her feels like staring directly into the sun. Her gaze pierces entirely through you, and in that moment, you feel wholly known. And then the moment passes, and you see only the woman before you. Of course, of course, you're in luck. I just put on water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sybil. You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. It's nice to finally meet you, Drake. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed in the holler. And new poor Perlene is, and now poor Perlene is gone as well. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. Who was that outside? Just a very sick man. You don't need to be worried about him. Lady, that is not an answer. That was a fucking zombie demon who knew me and I am afraid. And no amount of rosemary hanging off your wall is going to make me less afraid. The fuck? You knew my mom? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for Mary for Ray. Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was such a lovely woman. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with unsavory tales of her youth. 
How did you know that she died? Oh, her land was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I wouldn't get an earful of, bless her heart. I never met Perlan. You don't have to pass on your condolences to me. Have no feelings about the woman. <laughs> That's fair, child, but it seemed like the right thing to do. We need your help. Ah, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? I'm not sure I follow, dear. I know which oils to use for which aches. I know a bit about classic spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? Duke was killed tonight by something in the woods. Oh my lord, have you contacted the police? Yes, and they didn't take it very seriously. They're not even looking for the body until tomorrow. Those things out there. I don't even know how to describe them. Hmm. I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't... This wasn't the local wildlife, Miss Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out a memory card from her sleeve and pops it into her phone. This must have been why she was so quick to hand over her camera. I wasn't about to just let the police hold on to this. At least, not before we had a chance to make a copy. I'm not gonna say anything. Where was this? Up the mountain to the northwest? Within the town limits? Yes. I see. Is there any way to make the video bigger and louder if you can? I'd need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You'd better come with, Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Kanika, come on now. We could use a little help. What, Mom? Oh. Hey, Stella. And Gretchen, who's a good potato? And a stranger. What are you doing in my house? Um... Hi, I'm Drake. Tabitha's cousin? Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if we can borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have... seen or found something, I guess. It's really important, Kanika. Okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out here. Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. Duke got killed out in the woods tonight. It It's on the recording. Wait, are you serious? Duke's dead? We can watch this without you. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? I'm sorry either of you had to see this, but Drake and I have no idea how to make heads or tails of it. Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really. I'm okay. You remain silent. Poor Duke. Poor Bo. Has anyone told him yet? We talked to the police. I hope they told Bo, but Earl and Deputy Franklin didn't seem to be in much of a hurry to do anything. I'll call him later tonight. But for now, we have something far more serious to discuss. Um... Whatever happened in the woods, we weren't supposed to see any of that. You're not wrong. These things my grandmother called them ditchlings. They are a terrible omen. A sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on. Whatever's doing this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Drake with this 
Highly po crap. A man just died. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are har harmless to people, despite the grizzly seed in the woods. How can you say that? Duke is dead. An unfortunate accident and nothing more. Just as birds flock before a storm, the ditchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. Jesus, Mom, they've clearly had a rough night. They don't need that. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever those things are, they aren't magic. We can't rule that out, not after what we saw. But fine, let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to those animals. You saw the chicken in our video. What was that gross? Um... Maybe the Ditchlings were here for Duke. Maybe they're making more of themselves. Maybe the Ditchlings were there for Duke, like some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Unfortunately, no. Their presence forewarns something far more sinister than one man's death. Stop speculating about this occult nonsense. Let's focus on what we know. Right. What are those growths? Maybe they're making more of themselves. Yeah, maybe what we're seeing here is some sort of parasitic larval stage, part of their life cycle. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something like this, out there. Not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that'll clear all this up. Oh dear, I forgot entirely about the tea I'd put on. Let me fix you a couple of cups. It'll help soothe your nerves. I don't know, it's getting late, and I should let Drake get some rest. I ran her ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. Um. Um. I feel like I don't want to say any of those. Thanks for everything, you two. Let me get you some of my house-made peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. Bye, Stella. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see you. Bye, Drake. It's excellent, iced or warm. Though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. Alright, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay tonight if you want. Um... I mean, I would love to, but I don't feel okay with not seeing what's up with Tabitha. I should probably head back and check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're okay heading back up that mountain alone? I'm gonna nod silently. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, yeah. We're in this together. Yeah, we are. Stay safe, buddy. You begin the long hike back up Scarlet Estate alone. Almost home. I'm so fucking scared, bro. You've made it. Your salvation in sight, you make a mad dash to the door. As you reach for the knob, the door swings open. Where the hell have you been? Oh, whoa, wait. Which one of these called you back? Called you back as soon as I had reception. Did you? I didn't notice. Someone named Wayne? 
Do you know anyone named Wayne? I have no idea what you're talking about. I went into the woods with this girl I met to find some cryptids and it ended with us watching a man die. Oh, so you met Stella. Then, uh, that explains everything. And she's gotten you all worked up. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Can you tuck me in? <laughs> Jesus, um... Okay, good night. You're alone in the estate. The sound of wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settle into your room, you remember that Stella has asked you to call once you get back. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different, like she'd been crying. Did you make it back alright? Yeah, I'm alright. How are you? Totally fine. I mean, as fine as I could be, I guess. You don't have to worry about me. Go get some these, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that has happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in these moments, for now you're safe and you're warm. Eventually the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them scram like nothing, make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. Who's that? Oh my god. I was genuinely completely unprepared for how fucking good this game would be. This is the end of episode 1. Episode 2 is slated for early June release through our early access page. You can wishlist the game on Steam, please do. If you'd like to continue with this world state in episode 2, please save your game now. Holy shit. I thought, oh, the art style looks nice, and it's another visual novel game, and the episode one was free on Steam. It was recommended to me. Why not try it out? This is so good. It got so scary. The ambiance was fantastic. The I got so spooked. Like, it was so creepy. Incredible. Absolutely amazing. Jesus, like... I can't wait for episode two. Damn, like, 
I want to play this again. I want to try everything. Incredible. Just wow. I want to see what happens if you have different traits. I want to see what happens if you choose different paths. And if you're... What happens if you take the asshole route? What, what happens if you remain neutral the entire time and say nothing? Just fuck. That was so good. I can't state it enough. I loved this. It was like mm, double the time that I expected it's, it, this was only going to take like 30-40 minutes just like a brief introduction and just when things start to get interesting it cuts you off and leaves you on a cliffhanger but holy shit this is so amazing I can't wait for episode 2 I can't wait to play again in my own time and try different things amazing just amazing I really hope you guys enjoyed watching with me Thank you so much if, you know, if you did and if you're hanging out with me throughout this whole episode, please leave a like if you enjoyed it, it means a lot to me. And I'll see you soon, probably for a different game until episode 2 comes out, but you bet when episode 2 comes out I'm gonna be right on that because this is one of the, the like, this has reeled me in more than any new game I've played in a while. So, so, so good. So yeah, um, thanks again and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.